Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Zuni Pickups. In today's video, we'll be talking about the Nike React Element 87s in the anthracite or black colorway. So these came out July 13th of 2018 here in America, but I think they did come out about two weeks prior in Europe. So it was kind of a, a staggered release. Uh, they retailed for a price of $160 and they were available in two colorways, uh, this anthracite black colorway and a sail bone colorway. I'll put the picture up right there. So to say that the launch of this shoe has been interesting would be a understatement. Um, interestingly enough, when pictures of this shoe first came out a uh, couple of months back, it wasn't even for um, these regular Nike models. It was like of a collaboration model in between Undercover and it was... Uh, a, a couple of different colorways. There are some pretty wild colorways that, that leaked. I'll, I'll throw some pictures up there. And uh, initially, the, the reaction was a little lukewarm. I mean, a, a lot of people did like it, but a lot of people were just kind of like meh about it. So fast forward a couple of months, Nike eventually released the pictures of the non-collaboration model, just like the vanilla Nike model that they were dropping. Um, this uh, anthracite colorway and the the sale colorway and then and the people all of a sudden just like the hype started to go off the charts uh, I think most of the hype was behind the um, the sale colorway just because I think the sale colorway does look um, a little bit like the the Mars yards so anyway yeah the hype just started going like crazy and the hype just reached a fever pitch you know towards the launch day of the shoe rumors are that this shoe was supposed to be general release but then uh, launch day came around and turns out they weren't. Only tier zero Nike accounts were carrying this. So it was either at those stores that you could get them or you could get them on sneakers. Um, you know, a lot of people did succeed in getting these. A lot of people did fail. I think, you know, like maybe 30, 40% success. Uh, 60 70 percent failure is kind of like what I'm seeing on the internet uh, stock was not very plentiful I know some sneaker stores only got like 30 40 pairs um, for the entire stores so yeah these were definitely a little hard to get so yeah let's talk about the shoe and see what made them so hyped up what made them so great and if they actually live up to the hype uh, before we talk about all the features and details of the shoe, I kind of want to talk about the design background of the shoe because I think it is pretty cool. Uh, so on sneakers, there was like a little article and I did some reading and, and they say that uh, the shoe was built from the bottom up, meaning that they, they designed the sole of the shoe first and then they built the upper on top of the sole, which is a, a very interesting way of designing a shoe. Um, as you can see, this shoe uses a React midsole and... Um, you know, they, they, they use like the, the computer generated uh, most optimal geometry to get this ripple shape. It's, it's a very similar process to how the Epic Reacts got a very similar outsole slash midsole here. Um, but yeah, essentially they designed this like super futuristic looking outsole and then they designed this upper on top of it. But, you know, they wanted to do this whole like amalgamation of like future and past in one shoe. And what they came up with was was this essentially. You got parts of the Nike Internationalist, especially here on this uh, uh, lace cage area. And then you got some uh, elements from the Zoom Fly SPs, which came out last year in terms of like the material and the asymmetric tongue here going on so yeah there, it's it's definitely super cool that they um, were able to kind of infuse both elements of old and new to create this hybrid silhouette another thing that they talk about in that article is the fact that this shoe is essentially made for casual wear just walking around and stuff like that um which i think is interesting because uh, i think this is like one of the first actual like casual react shoes to come out yet so you could kind of say that this is kind of like a pseudo athletic shoe even the creators admitted that the shoe was actually designed for uh walking rather than any sort of specific like sport like running or something like that so um, now that we got that out of the way, um, let's move into the actual details and features of the shoe. So I'm gonna put some paper in here so the shoe kind of stays in shape while I talk. Throw that in there, boom. So as you can see, the upper of the shoe is constructed out of Nike's uh, stretch weave material. It's essentially kind of like a, a, like a, 
like a, almost like a plastic sheet type material. Um, Nike has been using this heavily in um, a lot of their shoes since last year. The first real um, shoe to come out with Stretch Weave was obviously the Zoomfly SPs. It's essentially the exact same material that they're using here and here. Um, a lot of the off-white um, Nike collab shoes got the, the Stretch Weave treatment. Obviously, the Zoom Flies got them. Um, I know the Converse's got them, the Chuck Taylors. Um, I know the Air Max 97's had some in them, and like they were used sparingly all throughout that entire collection. Uh, Nike has been pretty much throwing Stretch Weave on a lot of their newer shoes too, like, like this one. Uh, pretty much any shoe that's kind of like uh, that Nike wants to give off like a cool futuristic vibe, they've just been like slapping Stretch Weave on it, and we can see it being used here as well. So the shoe is basically constructed of uh, two big panels of stretch weave. You have the uh, lateral panel right here and the medial panel right here. And you can see that they're joined in the middle by some stitching in the uh, toe box right here. Kind of reminiscent of like, you know, like a Yeezy or something like that. So I think the main visual attraction of this shoe is right here in this uh, lace box. So like I mentioned earlier, uh, this shoe takes a lot of elements from older shoes such as the Nike Internationalist and uh, kind of melds them with uh, newer shoes. So you can see here this entire uh, lace area has been lifted pretty much directly from uh, the Nike Internationalist. They actually use a ton of different materials here. I've, I think I counted five different materials on this upper and they layer everything and they, they create this uh, intense amount of visual interest all throughout the shoe. So uh, looking at this um, lace box area right here you can see that obviously there's the stretch weave background going on and then you can see that there's some tumbled leather at the very bottom of the lace area and then there's a micro suede that goes up along the sides here and under all that there is uh, some 3m taping that kind of peeks out a little bit um, just so you can see that there's something there uh, to tie everything all together you got these uh, little 3m loopholes that come out all throughout the lace box that hold the uh, hiker style flat laces in place. In the middle, we also have a rectangular micro suede lace stay panel that kind of keeps all the laces in place. The tongue, as you can see, is pretty much a asymmetric um, tongue lifted straight from, I would say, the Zoomfly SPs. You can see the similarities here. The tongues are pretty much very identical. Um, this, the, the asymmetric tongue is essentially supposed to conform to your foot. Because your foot is not symmetrical, these, uh, these lines are supposed to follow the contours of your foot, and I can say that they work pretty well. So there's some, uh, some additional branding here. You have the Nike React branding here on the top of the tongue and the Nike swoosh pinwheel on the uh, left side of the tongue as well. So moving on down to the toe box, we have a little tiny micro swoosh on the medial side of the shoe and on the other side the lateral side we have a big oversized swoosh that kind of dips down a little bit into the midsole here and i think uh, this kind of is very reminiscent of what you see on the off-white blazers uh, the big oversized swoosh kind of dipping down so maybe they took some inspiration from there so moving to the back of the shoe you can see that we have some pretty wild taping going on here so the 3m tape just kind of goes up diagonally up onto the heel comes around and goes back down the other side so this 3m tape while looking super cool also serves a function as the heel stabilizer so this uh, tape gives the heel a lot of rigidity and stability and it acts as kind of like the heel counter a lot of shoes have like plastic uh, pieces back here in the heel to prevent your heel from popping out of the shoe uh, this shoe they've used this uh, 3m tape to kind of offer that stability so i think that's great uh, when companies kind of put things in that offer form and function at the same time so um, i really love this feature on the shoe uh, moving to the back, we have yet another material, uh, some some uh, gray suede here uh, with a plastic Nike swoosh and um, a pull tab with another hit of that 3M. At the bottom of the heel, we have a plastic heel plate with some Nike React branding on the uh, lateral side. And uh, there is actually, if you look very closely, there is actually a pattern 
on this heel plate as well. So it's just not plain plastic. There's like a little bit of a pattern going on that kind of mimics the pattern of the stretch weave. So little attention to detail like this, you know, I totally love that, that, that they have stuff like that in here. Moving to the uh, medial side of the foot, you can see that the micro suede from the uh, lace area does come down diagonally, um, ending right here at the heel plate. And there is some exposed stitching right here. Uh, one thing I also have to point out is the uh, liberal use of micro suede panels inside of the shoe. So I'm gonna take this uh, paper out for now. Um, so as you can see here, you know, you have this uh, micro suede on the outside here in the lace area, but that same material is actually attached on the inside of the stretch weave here to kind of create these cool visual panels. So you can see here, the entire heel area is lined with the micro suede on the inside, which offers comfort and kind of like sweat absorption, as well as it gives the shoe this really cool, um, kind of like two-tone effect. And there's some holes here on this micro suede panel and, and you can actually see the holes from the outside. So it gives the shoe a, a really cool visual look as well as offering some functionality. On the front of the shoe, you have this toe panel, which kind of looks like uh, it's like some black tape on the outside of the shoe, but it's also a micro suede panel on the inside of the toe box that is just forming this toe panel shape. It gives the toe panel that kind of like shape and stability as well as offering some comfort for your toes so i think that's that's pretty cool there's also another panel right here on the medial side um, right along where your arch would be to give a little bit of extra arch support as well so let's move on to the inside of the shoe um, on the inside you have this very unique cork insole um, i've never really seen anything like it um, where you have a cork insole you have a giant oversized swoosh printed on there with some nike react branding and uh, you can see that the cork insole has a ton of little perforations here for ventilation, I'm assuming. Uh, you got a bunch of perforations here on the uh, forefoot and you got some perforations here on the um, arch as well. But yeah, I think this is really cool that they use cork for the insole. Uh, it's definitely different and it really stands out. It's like one of these things that like, you know, no one actually sees when you're wearing the shoe, but it's really cool that Nike does pay attention to, the, to details like this. So finally, let's move down to the midsole and outsole, or pretty much one and the same. So the midsole, like I mentioned earlier, um, it's a full length Nike React midsole. So this uh, kind of ripple pattern was generated by some computer algorithm to come up with like the most optimum uh, geometry for the midsole for this React material in terms of just uh, flexibility and comfort and um, um, and responsiveness, etc. Because of that, you know, we have a very similar midsole pattern to that of the Nike Epic React because this um, midsole was designed using pretty much the same algorithm. But you can see that um, the patterns are a lot smaller on the Epic React than they are on the Element 87. So this is kind of like an enlarged pattern of this pattern and i think that might be due to the fact that like i said earlier the designer said this shoe was more or less meant for um like a casual shoe or a walking shoe maybe that kind of determined the 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 size of the pattern or whatever but i don't know it's it's slightly different but i'm i'm pretty happy that um they kept the ripple pattern because that's one of the things i really liked about the epic reacts so the outsole here is essentially in the form of this rubber webbing applied on critical areas of the midsole. So it's not a true outsole per se, it's just kind of like some reinforced spots on the uh, the midsole that have had little rubber, essentially nipples attached to them. So there's a bunch of them um, here on the forefoot and a bunch of them here on the uh, heel area. One thing I would like to note though is that they're just not on the bottom. They do come up on the side of the midsole. Um, you can see some on the forefoot here, some on the heel. Um, you can see them on the medial side as well. And you know, this is obviously purely, purely for um, aesthetics, but I, I definitely think you know, it adds a, a lot to the look of the shoe and I'm very glad that they did that. So now that we have established that the shoe definitely looks cool, um, how does the shoe feel? Um, what's the comfort and what's the fit like? So first of all, when I was buying this shoe, I was kind of worried because the Zoomfly SPs fit small, right? And then, the Epic Reacts, these also fit small. 
So since these shoes are essentially like a Zoomfly SP upper on a Epic React midsole, I thought that this shoe would fit small as well, but I was pleasantly surprised to find out that they are pretty true to size. Um, you don't have to size up, you don't have to size down, you just buy your normal shoe size and you should be pretty good in these shoes. Maybe it's because it's a more casual shoe compared to these other, like the Zoomfly SP or the Epic Reacts, but for some reason, it definitely fits a little more roomier and, and that's great. So if I line up the heels here with the Epic React, you can see that, I go up to the top, there's a little bit of extra room here on the Element 87. It's just a little bit, but there is a little bit of extra room here. So this shoe definitely runs a little bigger than the Epic Reacts. So now that we've established that these shoes fit pretty true to size, let's talk about the comfort of the shoes. So the full length React midsole, it definitely works really well in terms of comfort. This is like a very comfortable cushioning technology. So a lot of people always ask me about uh, React versus Boost, what, what is better? Um, I would definitely argue that React and Boost are kind of different cushioning technologies. They have kind of different characteristics. So uh, React is very responsive. Uh, it has a lot of oomph, it has, it has like quick pushback. It's, it's a firmer cushion that bounces back a lot faster than Boost. Boost is more of a pillowy, very soft, cushy type feeling where you put your foot on a boost shoe you kind of feel your foot sink into it like you know you're literally putting your foot into a memory foam pillow uh, react on the other hand it's firmer and it feels like it has a little bit more feistiness to it um, it's definitely a little more fun to wear because it's a little more bouncy I think so it's kind of personal preference but my preference is um, is is react I, I do prefer the react over the boost in in most situations um, if you're gonna be doing a lot of standing around though like not really walking uh, stationary standing I think boost would be better if you're doing a lot of moving around a lot of activities I think react is better um, so yeah, the full length React midsole, very comfortable, um, super high points there. However, I have to address the stretch weave upper that they've used on this shoe. Um, stretch weave, it's not the most comfortable upper technology. It's kind of restrictive and contrary to the name stretch weave, it doesn't stretch that much. Uh, your fly knit uppers or prime knit uppers will definitely be a lot more comfortable uh, because they, they're just way more elastic. On top of that, uh, the stretch weave upper doesn't breathe as well as those fabric uh, knit uppers. So if you're wearing this shoe for an extended period of time, you're definitely gonna be getting a little bit of swamp foot in there. So you know, that's one thing you should note. But overall, I would say this shoe is extremely comfortable, probably one of the most comfortable shoes I own. I'll give it like, you know, like an eight, 0.5 out of 10 comfy points or something like that so it's definitely not shabby in terms of comfort it's just you know the the upper you're just sacrificing a lot of uh, upper comfort for this kind of like cool futuristic look so yeah uh speaking of cool futuristic looks let's talk a little bit about the aesthetic and uh applicability of the shoe um in in, in fits and stuff like that um so this might be a controversial opinion but you know, I think that the the anthracite black colorway was the better colorway out of the two. Um, yeah, hear me out. Uh, I say this because the nature of the shoe is essentially like a very like futuristic looking shoe. You know, you got these like rubber pods. You got the crazy like um, stretch weave upper. You got all this like layering at the 3M hits. I think what this shoe lends itself to is kind of like a futuristic fit, right? Like you got your Gore-Tex jackets, your tapered like uh, cargo pants and stuff like that. And you got these black shoes on. Then you got like a kick-ass outfit. Um, so I think like the color black just like works better in that context. If you look at the other colorway, the, the sail colorway, I, it's a really sick colorway. If you look at the shoe itself, I think it's like a very beautiful shoe. It, there's no doubt about that. But, um, when I buy shoes anyway, I always think about like, um, applicability in outfits and like a sail colored techie looking shoe i just don't know what i would wear it with right like that kind of color is like a very summery color with like the splash of red um you would wear it like with like a t-shirt and shorts or something like that with some white tube socks or something I, I i'm not exactly sure it just like doesn't seem 
to work as well like in the context of being like a techie shoe like that colorway it, it, the colorway is more or less like of a, a retro shoe i think and for the types of outfits that i wear i think the black works better and uh, i was actually pretty stoked that i hit on the black ones and not the sale ones but hey i mean if you can make the sale ones work for your fits you know all the power to you i think those are definitely dope shoes as well also, we have to talk about the, the translucency of the shoe uh, because it is made out of stretch weave. So essentially, since the, the upper material is somewhat translucent, you can change the look and feel of the, the shoe totally based on what sock you're wearing. I think that's a, a really cool feature. A lot of people actually dislike that fact, but I, I don't know. I, if you just want a plain shoe, you just wear black socks and then you got a plain black shoe. If you want a crazy shoe, you wear some neon socks then you got a crazy, crazy shoe. So I definitely think it adds to the shoe. It does not detract the shoe for me at all. <clears throat> so yeah, in conclusion, I think Nike is definitely taking a step in the right direction with this model, uh, brand new silhouette. It was a home run, I think. It has all the elements that really make a good shoe great. Great attention to detail. I like the whole melding of the past and future thing that they got going on here. You know, I like that they're using React cushioning technology in their casual shoes. Hopefully we get to see more colorways of this shoe in the future. Um, I 100% guarantee we'll see them because seeing how, po how popular these shoes were, Nike would be stupid to not make any more of these. So yeah, hopefully, you know, if you guys were in the market for these shoes, this video helped. I'm going to throw these on foot so you guys can see what they look like. And once again, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.